Hey there, welcome to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. I'm the mom and I do the movie reviews. And if you are brand new to my channel, yay, you found me. I've been waiting for you. And if you're a returning subscriber, yay, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of your support. And as you know, I reply to every single comment. So keep those comments coming down below. My goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision as to whether or not you want to spend time or money or both sometimes watching a specific film. So the specific film I'm reviewing today is called Butcher's Crossing. This dramatic Western will be released in theaters on October 20th, 2023. The film is rated R and it's very R and is an hour and 45 minutes. My overall movie review mom grade is probably about a B minus. So let me explain why. Don't leave yet. I'm going to give you an overview in a nutshell and then I'll point out things I liked, things I didn't like, uh, tips for parents, themes worth talking about, funny lines, interesting lines, and recommendations for other films that are sort of similar that I think you'll also really like if you like this one. Sound good? All right, let's get started. So in a nutshell, this dramatic Western is based on the very popular novel by John Edward Williams about an epic frontier adventure. It's about a Harvard student who drops out of school to experience life in the Colorado wilderness. He joins a team of buffalo hunters that challenges everything he's ever known. The film was directed by Gabe Polsky, who also worked as one of the producers and writers with writing help from Liam Satter Malloy. Now, I've never read the book, but I've heard that the source material is richer than what is portrayed in the film. And now that's often the case for many book to movie adaptations, right? So here's the list of things that I really liked about the film. First of all, fans of Nicolas Cage will absolutely get a kick out of seeing him in this role. He was hugely popular for a time, then kind of dwindled down to only true blue loyal fans. And now he's on a surging upswing again. So good for him. This is the first time that we've seen him bald in a film and he's got a big thick beard and it caught me off guard. I almost didn't recognize recognize him. And you could tell he was totally getting into the character and loved it. Other cast members include Jeremy Bob, Xander Berkeley, Fred Hackinger, Paul Ratzi, and Rachel Keller. I hope I pronounced their names correctly. There's some beautiful cinematography by David Gallego. And in fact, the movie was shot on land owned by the Blackfeet Nation in Montana, in the United States of America. All of the buffalo featured in the film were handled by the Blackfeet Tribe Buffalo Program. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a minute. There's powerful and haunting music uh, that was done by Leo Burenberg, and I thought it was really great. Title cards on the screen give us an indication of the passage of the many months that these hunters are in the wilderness. Will Andrews' character, who's played by Fred Heckinger, is looking for meaning in life. He asks Nicolas Cage's character why, and he gets a very cold stare in return. And it's really fascinating to watch his naive, smiling face slowly mature as he witnesses unspeakable events. It's amazing to see so many bison in one place. At the end of the movie, the screen shows us some statistics explaining that in 1860, when this movie was supposed to take place, an estimated 60 million bison roamed the American West. Only two decades later, the bison population plunged to fewer than 300, not 300,000, 300. How devastatingly sad. So today there are approximately 30,000 bison in North America, thanks to efforts made by the Native American tribes and government protections. It's regarded as one of the greatest conservation stories of all time. In 2016, the American bison was named the National Mammal. Did you even know we had one? Yep, there you go. Now, the list of things I didn't like is a lot smaller because I really did uh, like this film. First of all, if you like animals, 
you're going to have a hard time watching so many buffaloes die at the hand of greedy men who just wanted their pelts. It's truly heartbreaking. And if you can't get past that, this movie is definitely not for you. We just don't learn enough about the characters or their backstories to feel completely invested in what happens to them. We care more about the innocent bison and how that could be happening in this country. Viewers will spend much of the time waiting for something to, quote, happen. Now, some things happen, but it kind of drags on. There were a surprising number of wooden acting moments, mostly in the town scenes with some of these extra smaller rolled actors, I think. Sorry, don't mean to offend, but just giving you a heads up on that. Uh, but the main characters, I think, did a pretty good job. Some of the characters don't seem to really serve a, a real purpose. For example, Xander Berkeley plays this old guy who just quotes scriptures and talks about God while on the buffalo hunt for months, you know, and you're like, well, was he going to carry pelts out? What was he going to do? <laughs> Let me give you some tips for parents. As I mentioned, the movie is pretty hard for children and really is not appropriate. We see tons of bloodied bones, hides, animal heads, and other body parts. It's heartbreaking to see fields and fields of dead skinned bison. There's talk of prostitutes. We see a man almost buy her services. Uh, there's violence. Another man beats another man to death right in front of our eyes. That's disgusting. And men try to survive in perilous conditions. I don't want to give you more spoilers, but stuff does happen and you're like, oh. <laughs> now, some of the themes that are illustrated very well in the movie are purpose and meaning in life, formal education versus life experience, the old west and frontier life, nature and animal life, respecting both of those things, by the way, ambition and drive, manliness, probably the ultimate in toxic masculinity. Some women are not going to watch want to watch this movie. Manifest Destiny in the United States of America. And we see some images, actually, in old uh, newspaper or uh, propaganda that they used back in the 1860s to get people to go west and uh, till, till the land and all of that. Anyway, other themes are capitalism, survival, slaughtering animals, and greed, senseless greed. Now, I always write down funny lines and interesting lines while I'm watching movies just so I can share them with you so you can get a taste for the dialogue and the script writing quality. Now, I didn't write down any funny lines because it really is a serious drama. A little humor would have been nice, actually, but it was pretty hardcore drama. But I did write down a bunch of interesting lines, and you can see all of them on my written review at moviereviewmom.com. So there's one line by Nicolas Cage when he introduces himself and he says, I work for myself or I don't work. You know, he is quite the entrepreneur and capitalism is working for him and he is very, very greedy. <laughs> Another line is by Xander Berkeley, and he's the one that quotes scriptures, and he says, the Lord has no mercy for the foolhardy, and we actually see that play out. And then another line, I couldn't decide if I wanted to tell you or not, but I'll tell you, it won't reveal too much, but I already told you that this young guy uh, quit school at Harvard just to go experience life and learn lessons, and so at the end of this big hunt, uh, Paul Racy's character says, tell me, boy, was it worth it? And he thinks for a minute, Fred Hecklinger's character, and he says, I saw what I needed to see. Um, and that's a loaded, powerful moment. And I don't want to tell you much more than that. All right. So let me give you some recommendations for three movies I instantly thought of as I was watching this film. The first one is The Revenant, where it's a group of guys and they're living in the Old West and they're traveling through the wilderness, and it actually won an Academy Award finally for Leonardo DiCaprio and well-deserved. The guy ate a, a raw fish right out of the river. <laughs> uh, he got mauled by a bear. He's like on the verge of starvation. I mean, he worked hard for that Oscar, and I was happy to see him get it. Another movie that also stars Nicolas Cage, 
kind of during those frontier Western days is called The Old Way. And it just recently came out. And then the third one is called Hostels. And again, it takes place on the frontier, the Old West. And, you know, it, it life was rough back then. And so if you're into that kind of a genre and you want to see more, check those out. I recommend each one of those for various reasons. All right, that's it. Thank you for spending time with me. And if my reviews are helpful, give them a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. That helps to spread magical YouTube fairy dust all over my channel so more people can find it. And I really appreciate that. And when you get a minute, run over to Instagram and you can follow me as Trina Boyce, my author name, where you can learn about my books, my online courses, and some of the other silly shenanigans that I'm up to as well as Movie Review Mom. Have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.